Revelation chapter 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. I am going to interrupt the flow just for a moment, because just a chapter before, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Okay. Alleviate confusion before it gets there. Seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. This beast has crowns upon his horns, whereas the beast in chapter 12 had crowns upon his heads. These are different beasts. In fact, let's go back to 12. A great red dragon, a wonder in heaven. Okay. And this one, it came up out of the sand of the sea. So it's coming from a different place. They're similar, but they're not the same. Reading in verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his great authority. So these are two different beasts, okay? I'm interjecting. Two different beasts, but they are similar in that they have seven heads and ten horns. But they're different, and one is a dragon, and the other is this leopard with bare feet and lion teeth, okay? And I saw one of the heads, as it were, wounded to death, and the deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given to him to continue for forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them which dwell in heaven. And it was given to him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundations of the world. And if any man has an ear, let him hear. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, which caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of these miracles, which he has power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell upon the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak 
and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that understands count the number of the beast, for it is, is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred and threescore and six. I have read chapter 13, the slight clarification of that beast, and now we're going to go over some of the details including the mark of the beast. Okay. The beast, the red dragon, gives him his power and his seat of and great authority. Okay, and there's one that's wounded. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, and who is able to make war with him? Okay. Not only can you not send assassins against him, you can't even send an army against him. This is like serious protection. Who can fight it? No one. Okay. And blasphemy against God, blaspheming God's name and his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven. That's a lot of blasphemy. And he makes war with the saints to overcome them. And power is given to him to overcome all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all the wor earth wash worshipped him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Wow. Wow. If you're not written in the Book of Life, you're going to worship this beast. How do you get your name in that book? Because worshiping that beast does not lead to good things. And here's a hint about patience. And this little beast is separate. It has two horns like a lamb, but he spoke as a dragon. Um, because out of the heart the mouth speaks so it is a dragon but it's somewhat disguised and if you're not clever if you're not tuned in you won't catch it okay and he exercises the power and he's able to kill people with fire come down out of heaven and he deceives those on the earth by the means of these miracles these are miracles these are not logical things these are miracles how do you fight miracles? In fact, they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. Wounded by the sword, he got sliced and lived through it. Okay. Even if you get to him, you probably can't kill him. And he caused... As many as would not worship the image of the beast, they should be killed. Now we get to this weird mark. And he caused all, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. It's not on your hand. It's in your hand. It's not on your forehead. It's in your forehead. It's what you think. It's what you do. And it has to do with buying or selling. That's the mark. And here is wisdom. Let him that understands count the number. For the number is six, six, six. I argued with myself. Should I explain it or should I not? <sighs> if you've gotten this far into book of revelations you're trying 
And if you're not trying, please stop now. This is meat. This is not milk. This needs some chewing on. Now, I will show you a false mark, okay? Just so you know, this is a false mark. Here, we have a six, which is two narrow lines, and it occurs on the outside, in the middle, and on the outside. Um, this also has an additional six, but that is these two longer lines on the inside and a space. The six on the outside does not carry with it a space. Okay, the numbers on the left and the right are different. The outside, middle, and end are there for a timing mark so that whether you go on a diagonal this way or a diagonal this way or straight through the middle. Okay, those are your timing marks, but they're also a right hand six. Every one of these has six, six, six on it. Um, a left hand six is a single bar and a triple bar, okay? The numbers on this side have different marks from the numbers on this side. Just saying. That's so that whether you go this way or this way, the computer can register the product. It knows, okay? Let's try another product. Again, these are random. I just grabbed them out of the cupboard. This is not a product, whatever. There's your six. It's on the outside. It's on the outside. There's a zero, which is the double dark space single line. There's your zero. Double dark space line. There's your six, which is two lines, okay? And then a space. But, zero, six, six, six. By the way, this is a false mark. This one is minced onion. <laughs> Whatever. There's your six, 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 okay? There's your one on the right. It's this double dark space, double dark. There's your one, double dark space, double dark. That's the one, it's tucked inside, and outside is the six. Middle is a six. Left side is a six. And the zero is the space, double, and single line. Okay, we don't have an example on that, but it's a left hand zero. But it still has your timing marks of six, six, six. This is a false mark. This is not the mark of the beast. But a lot of people think that it is. It's not. Because the mark is in your right hand or in your forehead. Okay, it's not on a package. It's not on the back of your wrist, a tattoo, or on your forehead. No, it's not even a chip. It's what you think, it's what you do. I'm gonna give you what it is, but if you know what it is, you have to do something about it. That was my hesitation in why I shouldn't. But if you're this far, you're ready to hear it, okay? Here we go. Old Testament, Ten Commandments. Read 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. In it you shall not do any work. Okay, So, the mark of the beast has to do with getting paid or buying. Okay, Here is a commandment about you shall not do any work. That means you're not doing stuff to get paid. Not you, not your manservant, not your maidservant, not your cattle, not the stranger that was within your gates. If you've got a friend who's not a Christian, you can't be paying him to do stuff on the Sabbath day for you. It doesn't work that way. It's a day for everyone to rest. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay. It's a memorial of creation. But note. Six six and here we are in Deuteronomy five the fourth command which is starts in verse twelve Sabbath day sanctify it six days you shall labor but it doesn't say six again in the lists of the Ten Commandments, and there's two lists. One Exodus and one in Deuteronomy. The number six is listed three times. Well, I think that's pretty much just a coincidence. But the six and the having to do with money, you can't get away from the tie of that to what happens here. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a mark in their right hands or in their forehead. In how you think about it, if you don't believe in the Sabbath, that is the mark of the beast. If you go out and work on the Sabbath, that's in your right hand. That is you showing what you believe with your action. And no man may buy or sell save he has the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Six days you shall work. And if you're working on the seventh day, that's the mark of the beast. I'm going to be honest. The, the Sabbath is an odd command. It doesn't have to make sense. God just says do this as a memorial of creation. And if you are not memorializing creation, are you really a Christian? Okay. In other words, if you're out working on the Sabbath, then you don't believe in the Sabbath. What are you going to do to show that your belief is real? You can fake what you do can't fake it in your heart. And why would you bother? It's going to be very difficult. If you're just faking it, why bother? You know, just go out and buy and sell on the Sabbath. You'll make a profit. Cool for you. That is the mark of the beast. What are you going to do about the mark of the beast in your life.